right, you guys, welcome back. Uh, this video, I figured we'd have a little bit of fun and uh, build ourselves a hot rod go-kart engine right here. Now, this is a uh, bone stock Predator 212, and I mean bone stock. The only thing that we did to it is we had this little header pipe that I built on there, made it loud. That's the only thing we've done to it. It's been on that little yard car right there for a while, but that thing is in a major need of an upgrade, so. And my trike is in a major need of an engine because we took mine off and put it on the silver bullet for Seth. So, and I did mention I had a whole lot, I had a whole lot of parts already bought for building up this little Predator 212. So that's what we're gonna do on this video. And right now, the only thing I've gotten done to it is I've pulled the header pipe off and we pulled the spark plug out. And just for giggles, I got my compression tester hooked up. Uh, I want to see what the compression is in a stock 212, or at least this one. Because, yeah, so we'll take the compression down, we'll ride it down, and then once we tear it apart, I've got a billet rod that's going inside this engine that's 20 thousandths longer. And I've got a set of head gaskets or a head gasket that is roughly 20 to 30 thousandths thinner than the factory. So that's like taking 50 thousandths away from it, which should bump our compression. And I really just want to see what that does. So go ahead and get that set up on the camera right or uh, get the camera set up on the stand. We're gonna pull the engine or pull it over about five times. Take a look at what our compression is, bleed it off, do it again, make sure it's roughly the same, and then we'll ride it down on the side of the bench so we don't forget. So let's do it. All right, as you see here on the camera, needle sitting at zero. So let's go ahead and pull this thing over, see what it does. If you can pick that up but right now our gauge is in between 70 and 80 looks roughly about I want to say just under 75 so we'll call it 73 go ahead and bleed it off there's zero let's do it one more time just to double check about 75 so if you can see that on the camera there but it is roughly 75 so we'll take it down right here 75 psi and that is s4 stock All right, 75 PSI seems to be what our compression is on this engine stock. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing completely tore down all the way to the block. We'll get, the, get all the fluids out of it, get the head off, crank out. We're gonna get everything out of this engine down to the bare block, get it cleaned up and start getting it ready to start being uh, reassembled with all our new parts. All right, our engine is mostly torn apart, but before I pull the crank and piston rod out, I just kind of wanted to show you guys something real fast. Now, I have the piston all the way up at top dead center, and just so you guys, just for a reference, you can see 
how far down the piston sits from the deck of the block. That is a pretty significant little edge right there. And our new rod should take most, if not all of that away. Now I also want to show you guys, there's our factory head gasket right there on the table. And here is our brand new head gasket that we'll be replacing it with. Now I've measured these guys out and our factory head gasket is 45 thousandths thick and that's measuring it right here on this ring here because it's already been squished. So 45 and then our new one here I measured the outside of course uh, edge here because we got the little ridge that's going to be compressed when we get torque the head down but the thickness here is 10 thousandths. So that is a 35 thousandths difference between both those gaskets you add that to the length of our rod that's 55 thousandths more squish that we will be adding to this engine so that right there should definitely bump uh bump performance up a little bit and really even if you guys wanted to be like just a little bit i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to include make sure i get all the links to these little guys in the description but if all you really want to do is pull the head and add one of these gaskets, you'll be bumping your compression, which should might give you a little bit more power you can feel. Who knows? But anyways, just wanted to show you guys that real fast. So now I'm gonna continue. Uh, we'll pull the piston and rod out of this thing here, pull the crank out, get everything cleaned up, and uh, start getting it ready to, play, uh, to get put back together with our new parts. Crank has been removed, it's been cleaned, uh, journal has been taped up and reinstalled back in the block, as you can see here. I've also gone ahead and installed our brand new uh, cam as well, and put the side cover on to help support everything. Now, we're going to have to clearance the crankshaft, and I figured as much from other videos and what I've read and seen, so I already anticipated on clearancing it. But I wanted to see just how far or how much our crank hit the cam. And uh, here's what we got. Let's see if I can get down in there where you can see. You can see the end of our uh, crankshaft right here. Right down there on the cam lobe there. Go ahead and rotate it over. So that's a way. Come into it. And it just barely hits the camshaft. So now I'm going to pull the crank back out, clearance our crankshaft, make sure that we have plenty of clearance between it and the cam, double check it a couple times if needed, and then uh, once I got all that clearance, I'll go ahead and take the tape off our crankshaft journal. We're going to set it up on our new billet rod over there and uh, use some plastic gauge, torque it down, check our clearances. But So get that crankshaft out, get it clearanced. And then we'll move on over to our uh, to our rod. All right, crankshaft is clearanced. I'll bring it up here real quick so you can see. Just kind of a light polish. See if it'll focus in on there for you. Now I just used a flapper wheel. Took off a little bit at a time until we got plenty of clearance between it and the cam. So now that that's done, I'm gonna set it right here in our rod. Make sure you got the bearings installed. So, got ourselves a little piece of little piece of plastic gauge there. Set that on the set that on the crank. Go ahead and put our rod cap on. Yep. Make sure now the they are are the billet rod. They have little. Let's see if I can get the focus in for you. There's a little dot, Whoop. and it just does not want to focus. But there's a little dot down here, so if you ever take the cap off, set it down, forget which way the cap goes on. Line the dot up to the dot on the rod itself. Which 
is something I just did right now. So, all right. Go ahead and place our rod cap on there. Now the directions for this guy say if you're using the, the molly lube or the actual lube, that you want to torque these little rod bolts down to 150 inch pounds. Or if you're using just the regular uh, motor oil, go ahead and torque them down to 170. I'm using regular motor oil. So I torque these little guys down to 170. They say go to uh, go to 70 inch pounds first, and then uh, 20 inch pound increments all the way up to 150 or 170, depending on the lube you're using. So. That's what I'm going to do right now. Go ahead and torque these down to the uh, 170 inch pounds. Then we'll go ahead and pull the rod cap back off. Double check our clearance with the plastic gauge there, and we're looking between two and uh, three thousandths. There's our little let's see. There's our little plastic gauge mark on the crankshaft there. Here's our little checker. So get that up there. As you can see. Let's see if it'll focus in for you. It is just smaller than two and just bigger than three. She tells us our clearance is uh, between two and three thousandths. So we can continue to move on. Now I'm going to uh, get that stuff cleaned off the crankshaft there. We'll go ahead and get the crank back in the block. Get our camshaft installed as well. Get all that stuff torqued down. Get that side cover bolted back up. And uh, we'll get ready to put the head on. Actually, you know what? Before I do all that real quick, I'm going to... Go ahead and show you. I'm going to remove the governor out of this thing too as well. And um, if you've never removed a governor from one of these engines, basically uh, you can pull the side cover off, crankshaft, all that stuff is still in place. And basically what it is, is once you pull the little lever off here, you can take a cutoff wheel and cut just above this clip, cut that off. And that will give you enough room after you remove that clip. This arm here will drop. Now, don't forget, especially if you've, if you've ran it at all, if you're going to do that, don't, remove, don't forget to remove this little washer up here. Because if you forget that, then it could fall down into your cam gear and all that stuff, and it would, it's not good. But anyways, basically then, this little arm here, it rides on this little plastic button. So... As RPMs increase in the engine, it throws these little weights out, which pushes this little plastic button and moves this arm, which is attached to a lever on another little spring going back to the throttle. So that's what pulls the throttle back. And that's just done by the these little weights here. So, but cut that guy off, pull that clip, drop this, don't forget this little washer here. Now you can remove this little button out of the gear. Got another little washer you want to remove. You can use a pick or a screwdriver. Basically just get in there and get that out. And right underneath that washer is another little C-clip. This little guy here. You can take a little punch and just open it up enough to slide it off this shaft that will give you enough room to remove this plastic gear out and there is a, another little washer that this rides on in the back i believe now after you've got that all out of there the governor's gone you can either leave that little pin in the case 
which is fine. It's pressed in, it's not gonna go anywhere. You will, however, either have to drill and tap the top here where this pin sits. You can drill and tap it out for a quarter 20. I believe that hole is about the same size. All you gotta do is run the tap in, then you can use a little bolt for silicone there. Tighten it up, that way the block's uh, sealed up again. You don't have oil coming out from that little hole. Or you can drill and tap it out to a little eighth inch MPT and have yourself another little breather. But um, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that pin in. I'll probably end up drilling and tapping this top guy out for a breather, so. But anyways, that's how you cut, that's, that's how you remove the governor. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it out, get that out of the case. We'll go ahead and get the crank, cam, uh, rod, and everything else put back in the engine and uh, move on from there. So I'll be right back. Crank and cam are installed. Piston and rod are in. Rod is torqued to a 170 inch pounds. And well, before I put the side cover on, I kind of want to show you guys something real quick. Now, if you remember from the beginning of the video, before we tore apart, how far down the piston sat from the top of the deck. And look at where it's at now with our new billet rod installed. Definitely, there's no, I mean, you can tell that it is definitely up from where it was before when we started. So, that's where that sits. I also wanted to show you guys here, got our dots lined up, the one on the cam here and the one on the crank. And another thing I wanted to go over is, uh, if you uh, plan on doing something like this to one of your guys' little, uh, 212 Predator engines there, the little clone engine, that if you pull the side cover off and for some reason destroy the gasket, you can use a see, cereal box. That is a Cheerio cereal box. The thickness of the cardboard on that box is roughly the same thickness as the gasket you would use on the Predator engine here or on the side cover. Now you don't want to just put the cover on without a gasket because it does use the gasket to help clearance itself between the crank and the cam. If you did not have this gasket on there, you may or may not get your engine to turn over, but each one of those will want to kind of bury itself or start golding the case. It does need a little bit of clearance for oil to get in there and help oil. So if you're in a jam, you need a gasket, you don't mind making one cereal box works out really well see here i'll go ahead and set this on there so you can kind of take a look at it it is the same fairly pretty much the same thickness there you go put a little bit of silicone on that torque it down be good to go till you get a new one or if you're like me you'll just run it <laughs> so but anyways i'll go ahead and get the side cover on now get everything torqued down and uh Start putting the head on.
right, the engine is completely put together. I've actually got it mounted up on my trike. Um, I think it looks really good on there. So, I have already fired this thing up and let it run through one heat cycle. Let me tell you, it does sound, it sounds really, really good, especially with this little inch and a quarter homemade pipe that we have on there. But, like I said, I fired it up, let it hit one heat cycle, let it cool all the way down, because I am going to run it through one more heat cycle, and I want you guys to hear it. But, before I start it up, I kind of want to go over some of the things that I've done on this engine. So as you can see here, one of the things I got is this clear hose. I've got it uh, tied off to the factory little port on, uh, on the factory valve cover. It goes all the way around to the front because I have, let me go on the other side for you. See if you can see it. Yeah. I have removed the factory oil uh, shut off switch inside the block, tapped it for eighth inch MPT to run it up to this little guy here. Now I'm either going to put a breather or make a catch can up here which will allow the oil to drain back into the engine when it's not running. And that's because with the uh, added compression with this and probably the bigger cam as well, overlap or something to do with that, uh, it creates a lot more crankcase pressure. And I've seen that a lot on other videos or other guys that pop up their engines as well. So. Figured I'd just add a catch can. We'll probably end up making one where I'll let the oil drain back into the engine when it's not running. So. I hope the camera here can pick me up. It has been storming all morning and actually since last night, because this is the next day. But it hasn't been let up. So hopefully you guys can hear me. All right, so uh, we got the breather system. Uh, next thing I want to show you guys is my MSD spark plug wire and that is tied into the factory coil pack. Now really all all you have to do is unthread the factory spark plug wire and I'll show you I've got that over here. So this is the factory one. If you look down inside let's see if I can get it to focus. It threads into a little spike in the factory coil. And this is a solid core wire. So basically all you do undo is thread, unthread it from the factory coil pack. Take your uh, preferred wire, whichever one you want. I have a knockoff MSD wire and an actual MSD wire. You just basically cut the sheath back about half an inch, thread this guy into the stock location of where you pulled that one out of. Uh, add a drop of super glue if you want to keep it locked in there and then go over it with a piece of heat shrink Now I have a bunch of these sitting in a box over there as you can see I've already got ends crimped on there, but that's all it is And if you use seven millimeter uh, Solid core wire with any boot you want the seven millimeter. You don't have to cut anything back It actually threads all the way into the coil. You don't have to shave anything or nothing you only have to cut it off if it's bigger than seven millimeters. So that's it. Otherwise, it's just a, it's a factory coil, upgraded plug wire. Figured I'd do that because our billet flywheel came with a stronger magnet, and it said it should help increase spark energy. So I figured if we're getting increased spark energy, might as well upgrade the plug wire. Uh, but yeah, other than that, besides the the ignition and our little breather system I got set up. Everything else is factory except for we got a larger fuel line going to our 24 millimeter carburetor. Um, factory covers just drilled and tapped with uh, with quarter 20 nut certs to use these little clamps to help hold all these other hoses out of the way. So that tool comes in really nice. But other than that, she is ready to fire back up. So I'm going to put you right here on this little stand, point you in the direction of this engine here, fire it back up so you guys can hear it. 
And I tell you, it does sound it does sound really, really cool. Okay. Get you all lined up. Yeah. If you're listening, if you got headphones on, you might want to turn the volume down. Yeah. Here we are. Show you here it is. It is cool. I did say I just fired up one. Now it is kind of a pain to start. <laughs> say that. Get it on. Get it a little bit. snappy uh, much snappier than factory so can't wait to get the uh, find the throttle cable for it get a little breather built for this guy here so we can take it back out off have some fun with it but uh, I think I am gonna let I'm gonna let it cool down and I'm gonna let it run one more time let it heat right back up and I'll just continue to fluctuate the rpms high let it idle for a second um, I did put zinc out of in there to help for cam break in. I don't know if you should or shouldn't on these. I'm not 100% sure, but I just add 
took what you had for a five quart system, divided it, added a little squirt in there because this engine holds about half a quart. So that's all I did. Um, another thing too, if you're going to use the same cam that I am using, it does come with 26 pound valve springs. I believe they're 26. Uh, but it suggests you break the cam in on factory valve springs. I guess it, uh, otherwise you'd probably destroy the camshaft if you try to use these at first fire up. So it's another reason why I am going to let it cool down and run it again before I change the springs out, just to kind of help with the cam break in. But other than that, it is a runner. It sounds really, really good. I, I'm I'm happy with it. Uh, like I said, looking forward to getting the parts that I need so we can get this thing back on the ground, have some fun with it. But I am going to end this video right here. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope this kind of encourages you to get out there and get yourself one of these little engines here. Uh, if you've never worked on an engine before, these are great four stroke. He's got the cam, overhead valve, push rods, everything. Just air cooled. Uh, plus, if you mess this thing up, you can find these engines on sale for just a tad over a hundred bucks. But, so, but anyways, get out there, get yourself one, have some fun with it, get on Marketplace, find yourself a, uh, a junk frame. Somebody out there has got one. I paid 50 bucks for that one over there and maybe a couple hundred bucks for that frame there. Kids are loving them, they're having fun. So, but anyways, like I said, I can ramble on about this stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you've made it this far, and you, ha uh, and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button for me. Give me a thumbs up. And again, thank you for hanging out. And I will catch you on the next one.